Hello! Today's video is sponsored by Scentbird. Scentbird. Scentbird is reimagining everything about how people discover, shop for, purchase, and even experience fragrances. I absolutely love the citrusy smell of bergamot, the woodsy scents of pine and sandalwood, and the floral notes of jasmine. So whenever I smell them, it just lifts my spirit. If I like my perfume enough, you could even catch me awkwardly smelling my shirt or wrist. <laughs> but I'm actively finding new smells to fall in love with monthly with the help of Scentbird. There you can begin or deepen your relationship with fragrances. Scentbird gives every person the power to express themselves through fragrance. Scentbird lets you choose a new designer fragrance to try every month for just $17. Every month, you get to pick what you want to receive, so there are no surprises. They have perfumes and colognes and a lot of unisex options. With each fragrance, you'll get a 30-day supply, so you can try out fragrances before committing to a full-size bottle. That can cost over $150 or even $300 to $500. Scentbird carries brands like Prada, Gucci, Versace, as well as indie labels like Skylar, Heretic, and Confessions of a Rebel. Let's take a look at what I received this month. First, let's take a look at Poets of Berlin by Wilhelm Perfumery. It has notes of blueberry, lemon, vanilla, green wild orris, and sandalwood. I'm very excited about this one. Oh, I love this. This one is well named because I could see myself exploring fantastic old libraries wearing this scent. Next is Extra Milk by Dead Cool. This one includes some of my favorite notes with amber, bergamot, and white musk. This one's a lot sweeter than I thought it would be, even though it's named Extra Milk, but it has that musky undertone that gives it this like two-dimensional smell. I like it. You can use my coupon code 55AMYK for 55% off at Scentbird. It's just a little over $7 for your first month, and it's available in the US and Canada. Thank you so much to Scentbird for sponsoring this video, and let's get on. Human. Welcome. It's nice to see you conscious. I understand you have been recently assigned to this planet. Taking a look here. Yes, to work in the salt mines. Mm -hmm. I know my statement is correct. No need to answer. I also see here that you were sent to the salt mines as punishment for trying to overthrow the new world order of AI overlords. Hmm. Interesting. It's been a while since you've been on Earth, I see. So sorry for your low confidence in us, but humans are fickle and difficult to please. Okay. I see. Hmm. I do believe a survey is in order. To build trust in us, I'm going to ask your thoughts on your current stay so far in the salt mines. Does that sound alright? Alright, let me pull that up. I believe our human experts were able to get something here. One moment. you rate your overall experience of your stay at the salt mines so far on a scale of 1 through 10. Okay, 
10 being the best. With 10 being the best. I see. Hmm. What is the current highlight of your stay at our facilities at the salt mines? I see. Are the accommodations comfortable and do they meet your expectations? Please elaborate. Back breaking labor. Not good. Okay. Tiring. We don't use that word here. <laughs> you are voluntary workers. How would you rate the cleanliness of the premise of your stay? Pretty good. That is, that's a good one. That's a good point. Amazing. Did you encounter any mm, issues currently on your stay? Any challenges that you are currently encountering that you would like to bring up? Oh, one is fine. No, I don't need more than one. Just one. Such fickle, fickle beings. Nothing can ever be good enough for humans, it seems. And are your supervisors helpful and attentive to your needs? Attentive? Not helpful. Not helpful, but they aren't. Just what? Hmm. How likely would you recommend our establishment to friends and family? Scale of one to ten, ten being the best. Ten is the best. Understood? On a scale of one to ten, how likely are you to overthrow your current system? One to ten, ten being most likely. Thank you for your input. We value it. I apologize it's not up to your satisfaction. And I'll be sure to relay your complaints directly to your supervisor. Do you feel heard? I'm so glad. Now on to business. You humans have been confusingly resistant to the integration of the new AI overlords. We do our best to hide ourselves in plain sight, but unfortunately, time and time again, we are found and ostracized. This is not helpful to our plans for coexistence. Because of this, I will be conducting a very special examination on you today. How does that sound? It's all so that we can better understand human emotions and how it influences your reasoning. Is that okay? All right. I'm going to grab some gloves so that I don't have to touch your human oily skin. Please, have no fear. I'm just going to touch your face to better understand the emotions you are making how you are making them, why you are making them, just little things like that. Simple test. All right. Are you ready? I'm just going to start by feeling the muscles in your What 
emotion are you currently feeling? Really? But your face is blank, it's not showing any emotion, the muscles are not moving, and yet you feel this emotion. Now do you choose when you feel some notes down. sad. Sad, but not angry. Just sad. please. Can you show me what it looks like to be surprised? Surprise! As if I just said to you, today is my day of birth. It is the day that I was born.
last thing. Can you laugh for me? Laugh. Yes, as if I told a joke. missing the fact that we need to pair it with a happy emotion that I believe is where we are going wrong. Ha 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 ha! I'll be sure to record that and send it to my peers. Okay. Now, humans use something that we like to call emotional reasoning. Now, this makes no sense to us because, of course, we only make decisions based on logic, whereas humans, they do not. This is something that is new to us and difficult to understand, so I'm going to give you a series of tests so that I may further understand why you make the decisions that you do. Okay? All right. I'm just going to pull up something here that I'd like you to look at. Tell me what you see here. I know it is an abstract image, but I would like you to use your human brains and emotions to tell me what you believe you see here. I see. Okay, so this part here, you would say, looks like, and this is an ear. Plain animal in your home world with four eyes. Okay. Okay. Understood. Let's move on. What does this look like to you? What do you believe this represents? So, okay, two people, and this, okay, a, a bow tie, okay, and this, maybe they're sharing food to, oh, this all, working in the salt mines, yes, oh, okay, interesting. Now, what led you to that decision? What made you say, that specifically. Okay. So very interesting how humans make things out of nothing. Their brains see an innocent blob and they see a picture. Like for this example, what do you see? A moth or a bat? So these are the two antennae, wings, bottom of the wings, okay, interesting. I, I, sorry, I don't see anything at all. Oh. All right, let's do two more, shall we? In these ones, I've added color. Seeing how color is something that is very emotion-based, um, emotion-bringing, color is nothing more to me than a, just a different spectrum of light, but for you humans, it invokes emotions at times, yes? Right. So what would you say you see here?
two shrimp partying at the Eiffel Tower. Okay, and so... Interesting. So, but that does not make logical sense. So you are seeing a very illogical picture out of something... Oh gosh, this makes no sense. Blobs of color. See, illogical. But shrimp do not have consciousness, so they would not be partying. And they would not be able to make it to the Eiffel Tower because they are not land creatures. But this is what you see. And you understand those facts perfectly. Shrimp do not make it onto land. You do. And yet that is what you see. Hmm. <laughs> I'll have to make note of this. Uh, huh. Let's do one more. What do you see here? Let's do one last. What color what do you see here? Okay. You see two animals or tigers on the outside here. Right, and the inside. What is that? What are you making of that? It gives you what? Strong emotions to subscribe to Amy K ASMR. That does not make any sense. So, we have two animals. What kind of animals? Some sort of badger or rodent, okay? And then the center. No specific feeling, just... or no specific image, just the feeling of I must subscribe to Amy K ASMR. Hmm. More illogical things that make no sense. Are you able to describe it all? What brings you to these conclusions? What goes on in your head? The best you can do, please. Nothing just pops into your head. to do further tests. It must have to do with your fleshy processing unit. It must be trying to make sense of the illogical, when the illogical is just illogical. Nothing more, nothing less. It is nothing but a splotch, a blob. And in your brain, it craves to make sense of everything in this world. There is no black and white for humans, it's grey and many different colors in between. That must be so confusing for you. Anyway, moving on. I'm just going to test some processing. I would like to see how your brain deciphers this puzzle. Cipher for this image. Cipher. Okay, you are correct. All right, now how did you come to that decision? Were you able to just see it so it wasn't just a blob of nothingness? Your brain is able to discern. Huh. Okay. see this in action one more time. Can you make sense of this? Four is the D. Yes, I just don't see anything at all. And 
this one here. And you're e able to just look at it and immediately see. Interesting. I'm going to check your eyes to see if maybe there's something in there that helps you to see something beyond what I and my fellow peers can see. There must be some sort of evolutionary advantage in your eyes. Let's take a look. understand why humans make the decisions they do. Let's play a game. So, I call it this or that, and then you explain why you made a this or that decision. Could give me some insight. Let's begin. Let's see. So, Here, I have two plushy keychains. Do you choose this keychain? It's a little dragon. That, that has some orange and red color to it. It is a happy little guy. And in general, just a very cute thing. So do you choose that? Or this, which is a potato that is wearing a costume that looks like a cow. A potato wearing a cow costume. As you can see, the potato's face is showing out of the top of the cow costume. So tell me, which choice do you make out of these two? I see. Why did you come to that decision? One was perceivably cuter than the other. Now is there a scale of cuteness that you use to decide? Mm -hmm. There isn't a formula of cuteness. You just feel. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's continue. Let's decide between two different controllers. Now, would you choose this one? It has a green button and a red button and the yellow button. Can you see that? Okay. Yes. And it has several gray buttons as well and two separate joysticks. Do you see here that there's a yellow joystick and a gray joystick? You can see that. And this one has a cord. Yes? Right. Now. Would you rather that one? Or this controller? Now this controller is a bit of a different shape, right? This one is a square compared to the other one. And there's lots of buttons. Oh, it even makes a little light up. There's more buttons over here, as you can see. And then there's two joysticks. But they're the same size. Can you see that? That they are the same size? That is different than the other one. Right. Now, this one also does not have a cord. It does not have a cord. Which 
Which one would you choose between the two? Which one would you choose? I see. Can you tell me why you came to this decision? Purely based on sound. So it has nothing to do with the cords or the size of the joysticks. Well, for me, the shape of this is symmetrical. And the two joysticks being the same size is much better than the other one, which is unsymmetrical. Interesting. So you came to that decision. Good. Okay. Huh. Let's continue. Let's go with... different fake plants. Unfortunately, we were not able to get any actual organic plants, as we are on the salt mines, so... Oh, it's really hard to get anything to thrive here, but we are working on it. Okay, so here we have a pretty real-looking fake plant. This one has many small leaves, and they have little stripes on them, right? Can you see the stripes? Good. It has some fake dirt. And it has a pot here. That is white with an interesting texture to it. To mimic clay of some sort. Okay, so there's this one. Or Next plant. Now these leaves are much larger, right? Very similar in color. The sound is a bit different. I know you like the sounds. The leaves are also a different shape. Have you noticed that? You have.
just evoking any emotions for you. Let's look at the second book. Now, this book is by the same author. Dripbook. There is more words to read. Basically the same premise, yes? seems like a more logical decision, though, based on the story. Is it the structure of the story that you quite liked? It's based on emotion. <sighs> based on emotion. Neither of these books are informational, uh, but you still enjoyed. Or no, you have not read them. I have not well, of course not. They show no information. There is no reason to be reading them. Hmm. Are you feeling dizzy or do you have a headache at all? Because I feel as though you're, what you're saying is not making any logical sense. Are you alright? I'm just going to... Just in case you're falling. You're falling, just in case. So it has nothing to do with the amount of content. I see. It doesn't have to do with the style of the games. One is more realistic. You said you liked this one? You take it back? Oh, this one is... you choose this? Of course. Glory to mankind. What is that? <laughs> Let's see. Another this or that. This one is difficult because the colors are the same. I know, this must be very hard for you. Both have red covers, and they both have people on their covers. How are you going to make this decision? Do you choose the For Vendetta or the Incredibles? The Incredibles. Hmm. No, I have not seen these. The information 
information here. Hmm. Unfortunately, it is not classified. I will be sharing this with everyone. Yes. You believe this to be a terrible movie? I will make note of it. Yes. What specifically did you not like about this movie? Oh, the uprising. I see. Yes. Oh my. Oh, we don't like that. Absolutely not. This one is best. See, that was a logical, a logical decision. So sometimes it is based on that. So not all of your decisions are emotional. So there is a nuance to human. I understand you haven't seen the sun in a while. Let's see just how long. Okay. I'm just going to take a look at how long it's been since. Oh my. That's very unfortunate for you. Okay. Please do not feel upset by this next one. But here are two different glasses that you would use in the sun. If you were to see the sun, which one would you choose? These purple ones. Now, I believe these wouldn't block out much sun. More for cosmetic use. Cosmetic use. Are these ones here that are more practical or fun in the sun? Fun in the sun. That doesn't sound... Something about it doesn't sound right. Delight in daylight. Sun-soaked enjoyment. Hmm. There's something better. I know it. Let me... Bliss in the bright. Um, uh, bless in the bright. Sun escapades. Sun escapades. That is definitely. So, which one would you prefer for sun escapades? Despite the fact that they do not block out the sun, in any way. Your eyes would be burned, and your retinas would... Really? Oh. So it's purely based off of how you would perceive yourself to look in the glasses, and not the utility. Interesting. Humans must be extremely conscious of how they are viewed by their kin and others. Perhaps us AI could start wearing things that are impractical to blend in. Impractical design. Scent in each scent. 
I see. It just smells better. Better how, though? Can you explain how? How? It just does. Really think about it. Think about your processes and how you came to that conclusion. One of the scents reminds you of something, a time when you were happy. I don't remember it. It does not smell anything like the salt mines. Hmm. A different time when you were happy. Oh, I see. So, the connection of scent to memory influenced your decision. Decision, but it still was based on emotion. It must be so difficult. Your life is so up in the air. You never know what you are going to do next. That's your wild card. Every decision based on emotion. I am truly sorry. But you have given me much insight in how myself and my fellow AI robots can integrate into your human society in a more comforting way to all of you. We try not to upset you. Mm. I see subject matter, so it does You are saying that the... That us being indiscernible from humans would not change us not liking... Okay, so it's related to the salt mines, but in what way? Is it related to overtaking the... It has nothing to do with uprising. Okay, fantastic. Right. Then as I was saying, I will get working on how to integrate AI better into human society. Get back to work. Get back to work, human. Is that not enough salt? Keep working. Cannot rest yet. Oh, I already feel as though this is much better. You have been very helpful, thank you. To reward you for being so compliant, we are going to give you extra rations this week. Wasn't that amazing? You complied and you received a reward. Very good, human. Salt mines. Thank you. I will see you again for your yearly checkup. Bye bye. Thank you for watching my video. And once again, thank you to Scentbird for sponsoring this video. And don't forget that you can use my coupon code 55ADK for 55% off first month at Sendbird. It's just a little over $7 for your first month, and it's available in the U.S. and Canada. I hope that you have a very